If I'd known what I'm about to tell you when I started cycling, way back when, in the olden days, or if someone had told me at the time, I think I would have really appreciated it. So here I am as a wily veteran, someone who's experienced all the pros and cons that this beautiful sport has to offer, and I'm gonna tell you what you can expect if you're just entering this beautiful but slightly crazy sport. Let's crack on. Cycling won't just take over your life, so will coffee. If it hasn't already, be prepared for your caffeine intake to increase considerably. I mean, there's the pre-ride espresso, then there's the, you know, you meet your friends for a ride, you have a pre-ride coffee at the, at the cafe where you've, where you've met them, and then there's the, the mid-ride coffee stop, obviously. I mean, have a you know, cheeky flat white there, rude not to, and probably with oat milk in it. I mean, that's, that's nice, isn't it? Then you have your post-ride coffee as well. I mean, like a nice cappuccino at the end. I mean, it's good, it's, it's recovery drink. I mean, it's, it's got protein in it in the milk. So, uh, yeah, nice. I mean, and it's not just any old coffee. I mean, you can't drink any old rubbish. You have to drink nice coffee as well. You'll end up spending all your pocket money on a nice coffee machine, and soon you'll be making your own pretentious coffees at, at home. Mm. Holidays will never be the same again. No matter where you go abroad now, it, once, you've, once you've been away and ridden your bike in a beautiful place, you can't think of anything else. Soon enough, you'll be planning your holidays on whether or not you can get a quick ride in here or a day out on the bike there, or are they near any epic climbs that are sort of rideable distance from where you're staying? And whoever goes on holiday with you, I mean, if they're not into cycling as much as you are, well, they soon will be, or they'll start to notice a trend of destinations with silky smooth tarmac and epic climbs and amazing weather. Oh, it's great. Your wallet is likely to shrink. Yep, cycling can be expensive. There's loads of stuff you can buy. But one of the great things is it doesn't have to be. Cycling is an incredibly accessible sport. That's one of the most beautiful things about it. And there are loads of great bikes at affordable prices. But I mean, there's just so much cool stuff to, that you can spend your money on if, if, you, if you want to, and you've got a forgiving partner who doesn't mind you spending money on all these things. I mean, like, you, I like a bike, and, and you can never have enough bikes. You're always gonna buy more than one, M plus one rule. Like, you buy some fancy wheels, some new tires, like more aerodynamic clothing, more clothing, uh, sunglasses, fancy helmets, I've got more than one helmet. Uh, power meters, head units, nutrition, don't forget nutrition, got to get some fancy bars and, and stuff. Oh, I mean, the list, and that coffee machine that we mentioned earlier. I mean, the list is, it is literally endless. There's so much exciting tech. This is a rabbit hole you really can fall into. Plus, if you're anywhere nearly as cool as me, you'll start spending more money on your cycling outfits than your real clothes. You need to eat tons more food. Prepare your fridge and your wallet again, because you're gonna have a massive appetite. It's gonna go through the roof. Your body is an engine, and if you're doing more with it, it's gonna need more fuel. To be honest, this isn't a bad thing. I mean, I love food. Food is great, and it tastes so much better as well after you eat when you've done a 100 kilometer ride and you've really earned it. Just don't make the mistake of having that pint and massive roast dinner mid-ride at the pub with another 100 kilometers to go. Um, it, 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 trust me, it doesn't, it doesn't end well. You'll, you'll regret it. And uh, also, you know, if you stop riding as much, you don't need to eat as much. Remember that as well. Nothing says I'm a super strong cyclist who can spend hours demolishing miles in the hot sun more than a set of carefully cultivated razor sharp sunburns. Now if you take it even further, you'll start looking for normal regular clothes that match the tan lines of your cycling clothes. I mean, no one wants a misaligned, mismatched tan line. Like you look like a Neapolitan ice cream. Ugh. 
And then just be prepared for you know your friends, your family, your co-workers, your neighbours, like everyone you know, to just ask you inquiringly about your weird tan lines. And then they'll inevitably ask you about shaving your legs as well, which you will be doing, probably. You're going to need a room dedicated to bikes so your rent will go up or you'll need a bigger house. I mean, I have to look for places that have two bedrooms, not because I want a spare room for people to be able to come and stay in. It's just, it's, it's just, it's just for all my bikes. Even then they still creep out into other parts of my house. You might call it the office or the spare room, but we know what it really is. It's the bike garage, yeah. The bike garage. Just be prepared for tire scuffs on the wall and chips in the paint as well as you maneuver your bikes around in a confined area. Probably worth investing in some polyfiller and some, uh, some spare paint. Yep, if you wanna get your deposit back. You don't have to ride full gas all the time. Chill rides are okay, or as the Italians call them, riding tranquillo. Yeah, sometimes it's great to just take it easy. You don't have to absolutely go full gas everywhere. Something I wish had hit home for me a bit earlier. Riding bikes is supposed to be fun, so chill out, enjoy the views, chat to your friends, take more coffee breaks, C.1. If you're commuting, it can sometimes be quite tempting to get involved in a traffic light criterion with the guy next to you who's always trying to be in front. But remember, it's not a race. Plus you'll only get to work extra sweaty and out of breath. Not cool. Be ready for every birthday card or gift from your aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, cousins, mum, dad, grandparents, whatever, to be cycling themed for the rest of your life you will be labelled as a cyclist. Not necessarily a bad thing, but you do need to be prepared for the influx of cycling related gifts from now till eternity. I'm not just talking mugs either, but bookends, books, artwork, t-shirts, sweatshirts, all sorts of trinkets and random crap that you possibly couldn't even imagine. Once they know that you're a cyclist, the floodgates will open. So there we have it, some wisdom that I've gained over the years that I wanted to share and impart on you. And let us know in the comments down below what you wish you could have told your earlier self when you started cycling. The weirder, the better. Yeah, yeah, mum, yeah, thanks. No, it, it's, it really it, it is a great, it is a great mug. Just, just what I always wanted. Yes, yes. Yeah, the pizza cut is great as well. Yeah, um, no, I've not already got one. Um, it will, yeah, it will definitely come in handy. Yeah, great, yeah, cool. Bye, love you, bye. You will be labeled as a cyclist. <laughs> Once they know that you're a cyclist, the floodgates will open. <laughs> floodgates will open. <laughs> I'll do one more when you started cycling. What do you wish that you know? No, I'm an idiot. Uh. Plus, if you're anywhere nearly as cool as me, you'll start spending more money on your cycling outfits than your real clothes. <laughs> That's tragic.